Do you want to make songs in Logic Pro X, but you don't really know where to start? Maybe you've got some song ideas, but they never really get fleshed out because the software just starts to get in the way and you don't really even know what to click on or reach for to make the sounds that you hear for the song actually come to life. Well, in this video, I'm gonna break everything down for you, my friend, in a very beginner-friendly, approachable way so that next time you open up Logic Pro X to make a song, you will know exactly what to do first, second, third, and so on. As we dive in here, I wanna give you a gift right off the bat. If you're making songs in Logic Pro X, I know this is gonna help you. It's my free mini course called Logic Pro X Songwriter Jumpstart. This mini course will help you set up a new workflow inside Logic Pro X tailored to you and the kind of music that you make so you can streamline your songwriting and make it super easy to capture song ideas. You're gonna set up a system for yourself that you can reuse over and over and over again so you stop getting bogged down with the software when a song idea hits you. This mini course, again, is free. It's under 20 minutes and it's the perfect complement to what we're going to be going through today. So take a second, link is in the description or you can go to swinemusic.com slash logic and get your hands on that free training and set up your own custom workflow inside of Logic. All right, so I'm going to open up a new project here in Logic Pro and I'm going to go ahead and just do an empty channel strip for right now. And a channel, all it is, you could think of it as a bucket for the sound that you want. And we could have different kinds of sounds coming from different sources. So we could have audio that we are recording because maybe you got a microphone, maybe you got an interface that can take the audio into your DAW, or maybe you've got a MIDI keyboard, something like this, or a drum pad that you can use to trigger sounds via MIDI and access VST instruments that Logic has. You could also be using samples or loops and inside of Logic, there's already some that come with the software. And so if you're interested in loops, that's up here and you can sort by instrument, you can sort by the genre, any kind of descriptions, you're looking for something that's clean, acoustic, I don't know, and then you can find something in that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's actually pretty fire. You gotta choose your starting point. And I kinda want you to think about how are you showing up in Logic? You know what I mean? Like how are you creating your songs? Are you typically reaching for a MIDI keyboard? Do you play an instrument? Like you got a guitar or something. And so you're usually starting with a live instrument that you wanna record audio into. That's how you wanna set up your channel strips. That's what you wanna reach for. So when you're like, I got a song idea, what do I do? You need to think about what to reach for, all right? That's the first thing. And so to navigate that is pretty simple. You wanna add these tracks, right? Because these tracks are the buckets of sounds that we want in our songs. And so I'm gonna go up here, this little plus button, add track. And this is the kind of track type. To keep things simple, it's probably gonna come down to a software instrument choice or an audio track choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose a software instrument because I wanna get my song started. And for me personally, I usually start with something like a MIDI keyboard. And there's a big reason why, because I can think about instruments or sounds that I have for a song idea and I can access them even if I can't play the instrument. So this is why MIDI is so powerful in my opinion because it can be like, man, I want some Irish sounding flute. I don't know how to play the Irish sounding flute. It would be freaking awesome if I did, but I don't and I don't really wanna know. <laughs> so I can access that sound through a MIDI keyboard to trigger that. So just for example, let's go ahead and start there. Software instrument, create, I've got it already plugged in here and I'm gonna go over here to the left to try to find some sounds that I wanna start with. Just for the sake of the example, I'm gonna go ahead and try to find that Irish flute because it sounded pretty sweet. I'm guessing that's a, some sort of woodwind. Oh, here we go, a Celtic whistle. Boom, if that's what you heard, you envisioned, you can find it. And that's what I love about Logic Pro too is that all of these sounds are already in here. You don't have to go digging too far. The first thing that I'm doing to start my song from scratch in Logic Pro is to get a sound, is to try to get some sort of sound that inspires me to keep going with it. So that's what I'm gonna search for. Gnarly. Okay, all right. Ah, I like that. So, okay, I found a sound that I like. Now, I'm not even gonna touch anything yet. I wanna stick with the sound to just flesh something out, all right?
Ah, I like that. Oh wait, no, let's go back. Okay, so I definitely have an idea that I really like. So that's the key point. I'm fleshing out my musical idea because that's where I'm starting. Maybe it's an instrument for you. Maybe it's something else. But I'm on my MIDI keyboard and I want to. And I found an idea because I found a sound that I loaded up. That ooh, I was like, oh, you gotta follow that. <laughs> you gotta lean into that. That's the stuff that's gonna lead you to further songs. It's gonna keep you inspired. And inspiration with song ideas is key to keep fueled up. So. I'm gonna track this down. I'm gonna identify a tempo. So I can go up here, this very top button right here. And if you go ahead and click the record button, you're gonna hear what that sounds like. That's gonna be too fast. So I'm gonna double click here. The lower the number, the slower the tempo is gonna be. The higher the number, the faster the tempo is gonna be. So that was a little too fast for me. I'm gonna try to go to 110. I'll hit record. Still a little bit too much. I'm kind of one of those weird people. I like the threes and the sevens. Let's try let's try 103. I like that. So now I'm gonna track that. So I'm gonna hit record and I'm gonna play along with that with that click track. Love it, there we go. So after I've got that captured, the very first thing I'm gonna do is press save. <laughs> Logic has an awesome autosave feature where it should be autosaving for you, but I've been burned in the past. <laughs> and so I always save my projects and you can name it whatever you'd like to, just so you remember the idea. Doesn't, doesn't really matter right now, right? Cause we're just still trying to get the idea going. But after the idea is saved, now I'm gonna trim things up a little bit and I can take my time. I can rest easy because the idea was captured, right? It's not like I'm trying to flesh out that initial thing still it's captured, it's documented. Now I have a chance to slow down and kind of fine tune it. And I always do this with all of my music, with all the vibes that I'm trying to set up because I'm trying to set up something that I dig, right? That is so important. I, I don't just wanna be using sounds, grabbing instruments, recording things, it, just to slap it all together, just to get it in there if I'm really not feeling it, right? So I hear myself already doing some melody ideas on top of this here, on top of this here but I wanna give myself the best chance of coming up with great melody ideas by making sure that this music, this vibe, I'm really feeling it. So I'm gonna spend some time now kind of refining this. How can we do this? Well, you can kind of quantize stuff. You can make sure that things are really in time. So I'm gonna do that first here. I'm gonna double click on that MIDI that I just recorded. This would be everything that I just played. So what I wanna do is go ahead and press Command a and if i go over here to quantize my personal favorite is this 1 16th swing a it just seems to capture some of the notes if they're a little slower so now i'm going to go ahead and play this and make sure it sounds right love it now we get to have some fun. A little tip here is you don't just have to settle for the virtual instrument or the audio that you're recording. You can add some effects to it to give it more of a vibe. Sprinkle some more awesome stuff on there. So I'm gonna try to add some effects. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Let's go amps and pedals. I love running synths through guitar pedals, bass amps, just weird random stuff that can create a cool sound. I'm all about it. So pedal board and I'm just gonna loop this and I'm just gonna start adding stuff be like oh I don't know this sounds fun this sounds cool look it's a smiley face kind of changes the vibe a little bit I don't dig that how about a doctor octave nope makes it worse Woo! it just adds a little bit of movement I'm gonna keep that let's go into modulation or sometimes these multi effects right here. This is a pretty, pretty cool addition that Logic has had. I literally will take this blue ball and I'll just drag this guy all around and see what different sounds sound like. Woo! Here is the before and after of our music.
I think that has a little bit more sauce to it. Now I'm gonna keep going. I wanna add some rhythm in there or some sort of bass. Once we get that low end in there, for me at least, it just feels like ideas start going. So I'm gonna add another track and I'm gonna be using this you know, software instrument again. And I can go ahead and load up the instrument that I'd like. I know the direction I'm heading. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Alchemy. You load this guy up, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's actually really simple. Over here on the left with the categories, you just choose what you're looking for. And then you can kind of break it down into subcategory, genre, and timber, like the way it sounds. But I know that I'm looking for a bass. I know I'm looking for a sub. And already there it is, deep sub bass. Another one is heavy sub bass. Like, come on, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and track that really quick. Love it. Same thing, I'm gonna click here, Command A, quantize. I'll go ahead and do some volume adjusting. Get that bass down. Sweet. Okay, now I'm gonna add a rhythm section. So I'm gonna click add track again. You see, I'm just milking this MIDI keyboard all day long. This time I'm gonna go ahead and go to empty channel strip. And I'm gonna head over here to electronic drum kit. And I'm gonna load up one of these kits that has the sounds. And remember, these I'm not committing to as much yet. We're gonna get to production and, and you know more detailed sound selection as we go to structure out and build the rest of the song. This is just getting the idea down. This is just getting us started. So I'm gonna try to find something. I mean, I, I like that. Let's see what that sounds like. I'm just gonna record that. Cool, quantize. I feel like that's where the snare is hitting, so I'm gonna get that in there. Cool. We did some extra saucing up and sweetening to our music. I'm gonna do a little bit to the drums just to get a little bit more of a feeler. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo them. Yo, no. Okay, so what I wanna do is layer that. This is you know, veering a bit into production, but I really wanna make sure this vibe is, is set. Like I really like how this is sounding, so. So what do I like about that? I like what that effect is doing to everything but the kick. I don't like what it's doing to the kick. So I'm gonna take the kick, I believe it's this guy. Yeah, and I'm gonna take it out. So now it's not affected anymore. Right, it's just on the percussion there. Do just a little bit of surgery. So I'm pressing option to draw, to duplicate this, to then go into this section and just get rid of everything except the kick. Right, so now I got that kick breathing free. Love it. Okay, so now I've got my vibe and we were veering a little bit into some production there that was a little bit more than beginner, uh, a beginner technique. But nonetheless, I want you to take from this, do what you need to do to get the vibe across. All right, so I'm gonna move on to some melody ideas because we're getting our song started. We've got a vibe that is sounding great to me. Maybe you don't really dig it. I like this. I could make something out of this. So what I'm gonna do, my little cheat, my little hack, is I'm gonna go ahead and drag this vibe all the way across the timeline, enough to fill about, yeah, I don't know, like two, two-ish minutes of playtime. I'm just gonna use my mouse click and select all of these guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and hold down option on my keyboard use my mouse to drag all of that over to where that first stack ended, right? So it started here. I wanna add another one here. Let go of your mouse, 
There it is. Another way a little quicker is to go ahead and highlight everything, move your playhead to where you would like the next thing you're gonna copy to start. Go ahead and press Command C, that's copy. Now all you have to do is press Command V as many times as you need to. See how it's moving along? Booyah. Let's see how much time that is so far. I'm gonna go up here, little drop down arrow. I wanna change my uh, readings up there to time. Wherever the playhead is at, that's about how much runway we've got. So I wanna get to about here-ish. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy a few more of those. So now what have I done? I've taken this vibe and it's just dragged out all the way on here. It's just, it's on repeat, just over and over again. And I wanna do this because this is the way that I capture my melodies. I like to have plenty of space, plenty of buffer room so that I can just let it loop and I can just try to catch whatever's gonna come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and now load up some audio. I've been rocking with the MIDI for a little bit. I'm gonna get this microphone all set up. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a track and I'm not gonna add a virtual instrument track this time, I'm gonna add an audio track because I'll be tracking something live. So for me, I've already got my audio interface, my device set up. If you don't have this yet, or you have an interface, but you haven't set it up yet, you just do some YouTube tutorials, just do some searching, but it's fairly straightforward to be able to plug in your interface to your computer and have Logic select it and use that as the means of capturing audio using your microphone or using a cable to plug in for like an electric guitar or something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and name this gibberish. So with a VST, a virtual instrument, right, we would click on the virtual instrument and over here we can change the sound on the left menu. For an audio track, you can choose a template, like a, a preset that you wanna have on that audio. And Logic is awesome, it already has stuff set up for you. So depending on what you're gonna use, you can click on that instrument and that is the preset options that you have. So I'm gonna click voice. I'm gonna go ahead and do a bright vocal. That's gonna load up all these presets already on there. All right, let's go. Oh yeah. So if you're gonna be tracking vocals at all, my biggest tip for you, especially at this initial starting place, remember we're trying to start our song, inspiration is key. So I spent some time after I established some music that I thought was cool, I added some more saucy effects to it. Got a rhythm and stuff in there that I added some effects to it. Same thing with your voice. Just put whatever you need to on there so that you sound sick <laughs> like the rest of the stuff. Who cares if you use any of this later? you probably are gonna change things. Most likely, you're gonna like switch things around, use different effects and dial in sounds. That all comes later. That has nothing to do with how you start, okay? With how you start is completely different than how you finish. And we just wanna get our idea off the ground. Then you have a chance to calm down, fresher perspective, fine tune things, all right? I noticed there's no reverb, or there is a reverb, it's just going to a bus. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. I like putting the reverb just right on. Space Designer. And this is a plugin inside of Logic, this native to Logic that I can use. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I like that. What you need for love. And I'm gonna get some delay on there too. I don't think there's, oh, here we go. I tell you you are. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit record and I'm just gonna let what happens happens and try to capture some melody ideas. And I cover this, this step that I'm doing right now in an entire separate video dedicated to coming up with melody ideas using this process. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll link that at the end so you can do a deep dive on that specifically. But I'm gonna go ahead and get some vocal ideas in there. I don't really wanna wait my bed, cause feeling like, oh, this ain't really Awesome, so it's imperfect and that's the whole point. Nothing is supposed to be polished right now. That's why mixing exists. That's why production exists. This is the initial creation stage. And honestly, if I could give you the biggest tip is to go ugly early. Like go ugly at this stage and just get and tweak and try and reach for things and let it not work out so that you can find the things that do. The next step is to begin arranging our song and introducing 
sprinkling a little bit of songwriting in there so we can get our concept down to spark lyric ideas. So this blocky looking logic project that we have right now will turn into peaks and valleys of verses and choruses and bridges. And that's exactly what we're gonna cover in part two of this series.